so guys, a couple of weeks ago here on the podcast, uh, I was talking about how, and I think Zach, maybe you, you mentioned it as well. It's, it's hard to run the table in the big 12. Hmm. Um, and then last week, uh, OU had to sweat out a 31 to 29 win over UCF. I don't think anybody really saw that close game coming. Texas had a tight game uh, against Houston before prevailing 31 to 24. Um, so with five games to go, is there a big 12 school out there that has a chance of kind of upending that Longhorn sooner collision course? Go ahead, Zach, you take this. Yeah, one first. yeah I'll take it. I, I think, uh, I mean, I think Kansas state is the obvious, obvious pick, you know, what they did to, to TCU winning 41 to three, uh, is, is just super impressive. And, um, you know, whatever quarterback they choose, whether it's Will Howard or Avery Johnson, I think that, that, you know, they, they look pretty dynamic uh, on both sides of the ball. And, you know, I think I, I, I still think that Texas and Oklahoma are kind of a class above everybody in the big 12 and it's kind of, everybody's fighting for third place, but, um, you know, I think Kansas State's got the best shot to 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 pull an upset. Yeah, I, I agree in the what Texas still has Kansas State on the schedule, right? The, like maybe yeah. this weekend or next weekend or, or next it's coming weekend. up. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's that could knock Texas out. I mean, right mm -hmm. there if um if uh if Chris Kleiman's guys have it going, um they they are playing well. They're they're among the nation's top um rushing offenses um so yeah it's it's i like i like kansas state but i don't but i think i think you guys are right i think it's i think it's oklahoma texas and then the rest and right now kansas is is leading that that shot for um for you know to be the best of 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 the rest um oklahoma state's playing pretty good right now though since they decided to go with one quarterback after that three-headed quarterback situation that was ridiculous but yeah, uh yeah. um but OU's got OU's got I think if I wrote this down right OU's got a decent schedule remaining against Kansas and and Oklahoma State and at BYU and and uh and TCU so I, you know I don't know maybe they could do it I, it's um um I I know that I don't know about the fans down there but I know the fans up here in Ames are are rooting for Oklahoma and Texas to lose every game, <laughs> um, obviously. And Texas and Texas gets to come to the to Ames on um, I don't know the middle of November sometime. And I know there's people already hoping for a foot of snow. So um, you know we'll see. Why stop at a foot? What the heck? You got a foot. You might as well, might as well snow three feet. Who cares? Right, right. But uh, um, yeah. But I I think you guys are right. I think I think it's it's it, it's the the battle is for is for is for third place and um you know we'll just have to see how that shakes out. Uh, you mentioned Oklahoma State and I that was going to be the team I kind of mentioned. Uh, I I always have such respect for uh, Mike Gundy's program. I feel like they've been pretty consistent over the last uh, I don't know fifteen you know years or so, um, and. But I also feel like they're a little bit like the uh, the Buffalo Bills of the Big 12 in that, you know, they just can't seem to, you know, clear that hump. They played Baylor in the Big 12 championship game two years ago. Obviously, it came down to the literal wire uh, with Baylor, uh, with an Oklahoma State guy stretching out for the end zone and Baylor stopping him at the, at the one-inch line. Uh, that was about as close as you can get. Um, but... They're surging. I mean, they lost to Iowa State, but they haven't lost in the Big 12 since. And I don't know. I mean, OU always seems to have their number. That's the thing. And uh, so that'll be an interesting bedlam game for sure.